I tremble and long for you. Where did you go? Where did you fall? Where did your eyes become too weak to see? Where did the world get covered in fire? Where were you burned by the light of a golden star? Why is a show on the Holocaust on exhibition in a small Canadian town in 2016? But the Holocaust is such a dark period in history. Why bother? It's true that it's dark. But this is also a story of the need to survive and the price of survival. So in the end, large moments in history provide a teachable event, which if we're lucky can enrich us, because life, after all, is everywhere. What compelled you to take up a paintbrush, teach yourself to paint, so you could tell the story of your father's life? You know, the, the exercise of showing my dad's history or his brief life publicly. Um, I, I've thought about a great deal about that. Why, why does one choose to exhibit, you know, um, a family member's life in this way? Why, why do you try to remember it? And I think probably, without realizing it, there was something about um, my father's Holocaust experience that the kind of forced anonymity that the experience created for people who went through it that made me want to ensure that they, he, his history, and maybe his family's history didn't disappear anonymously. You know, on the flyleaf of the book, I record the names of different family members of both my parents who, who died in the war. Well, those people would not have had any place in the universe that recognize their existence, but for the flyleaf. And I think, you know, if nothing else, if growing up with the history of my, my father and my mother's experiences during the war really underscored the extent to which those kind of things happened in secrecy. You know, when people are brutalized, it's a secret experience. And what happens to them as a result of that secret is that their lives become uh, anonymous. And that anonymity was one of the things that struck me, for example, in my parents' inability to say, both my parents' inability to say, just precisely where and how did their family members die. All they know was that there was a severance, they separated, and the next thing they know, these people didn't exist. Well, where did it happen? When did it happen? My parents weren't classic Holocaust survivors. They were not in concentration camps. They did not have numbers tattooed on their arms. But in a way, their history was harder to comprehend. Because their survival was the product, really, of geopolitical fate. Stalin and Hitler made a deal that divided Poland into spheres of influence. Those in the Russian sector went to Siberia, and those in the German sector ended up in the concentration camp. One group lived, and the others didn't. So while my parents' arms were not tattooed with numbers, their brains were tattooed with loss. The show is equal measures about death, memory, and refuge. And the perspective is that of life that follows after the dust has settled, and the war has quieted, and people try to make their lives out of the rubble that remains. The show is small and the book is brief because I intended to have the story have the bones of poetry rather than flesh of prose. I tried to make it the equivalent, I suspect, of cave drawings. The effort was to simplify and capture a moment that would resonate with having, well, without having a weight to it that would numb. You have heard the argument that there can be no art after right. the Holocaust, that the very idea of poetry or song or something lyrical or painting uh, after such slaughter is barbaric. What, what do you make of that? 
Well, uh, I, 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 I think, first of all, that, that's, a, okay, that's a quote from Theodore Adorno, I think, who yes. said after Auschwitz, it would be bar- barbaric to write poetry. Yes. In fact, I think the contrary, uh, that, that it's critical to have poetry at art. And, and poetry has, has a particular capacity, I think, of encapsulating thought and making the reader work to understand the thought. And, you know, the Holocaust is a monolith. It's something that's ungraspable if you leave it in its kind of grand dimension. You know, the six million dead, uh, the annihilation of a people. The, the experience is simply unfathomable when it's received secondhand. And if you leave it as a monolith, I think you run the risk that it will be un- unremembered because if it's ungraspable, mm. people can't internalize it and they can't remember it. And I think that the risk of unremembering is is a disrespect to the dead. You can't honor the dead if you lose the capacity to remember them. And the winds shifted and the seas rose. My father's world and everyone in it disappeared. <laughs>